Welcome to Rockcast. Dice Production. Denica Gwynn, welcome to a moment with Denica Gwynn. Um, okay, I just gotta let everybody know that we already did this. Damn it! And uh, I didn't hit record. It is recording. Everything is a check. Everything is good. <laughs> Uh, this poor lady is going through her second interview, and uh, we'll, we'll just we'll just we'll just do it. Okay, so here we go. Tell me a little bit about yourself before we get started. Uh, well, I have two kids at home, three kids total. I work for an emergent foster home, um, which means we take care of kids for thirty days while they find more permanent placement. Uh, dealing mostly with teenagers right now. Lots of fun. Lots of fun. Uh, <laughs> Lots of fun. Um, now a lot of people are these days. It's kind of like yeah. the synapse of what I do, and then mm, that's it because we really don't yeah. have a future, it seems, sometimes, and but we do. Today is the 30th. Two more days in 2020 will truly be hindsight because 2021 is going to be so perfect. I don't know why people think like that, but whatever. Well, that's awesome. What a noble profession. And... Uh, Having learned from the earlier interview, a little bit of your back history and everything, uh, yeah. I know that you are suited for the job um, and all that stuff. I, I think that actually tied into your answer, so I won't give any of that away. So, question number one, what is the difference, in your opinion, between living and existing? And go. Yeah, I, I, I did the whole just existing thing where you just I go to work for 16 hours a day come home feed the kids put them to bed wake them up and like, that's all we did and wasn't making enough to to live and it wasn't until this year that we were really able to you know settle down find some stability some security and do the actual living part where we would go to the parks or uh, we took our first vacation this year and that's awesome just being able to do more than function, more than just the day-to-day -day things, mm. being able to make memories and um, give them something to look back on was really important to me this year. Nice, nice. So instead of just doing the thing, the 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 system, you know, no, it, it's a it's a silver lining, I think, in all of this. People are going to appreciate it. I mean. It's always been like tomorrow or the bills are due tomorrow or this. We got to do this. Yeah. I got this schedule for this week. We got these babysitters for these days and all that crap. And now maybe for a while, at least in the first six months, man, we didn't know if we had a future. As far as we were concerned, everybody around us was going to die and the whole yeah. economy is going to shut down. And, da, 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 da. and uh, it turns out actually over after the initial shock of it, I find some, I mean, they're there have been some severe and alarming increases yeah. in certain things, domestic violence, alcohol, weed, drugs in general. But I think that yeah. kind of toilet paper consumption, <laughs> people were literally <laughs> scared shitless. Scared shitless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God damn it. I don't get that. Out of all the, it's the evergreen state. And, and you get, buy a bodea, you know? I'm surprised. I bet those sales <laughs> went up. I'm going to buy stocks of that shit. Compost it's, toilets, I'm telling you. So it feels, it sounds like, Living is just doing what's expected and existing is taking advantage of the moment kind of thing, I guess, is what I'd gather from it. Do you feel a little better now? I mean, I know it's scary at the beginning, but does it feel like it's giving you a little more control or less control over your life? Well, we didn't have, <laughs> we didn't have very much change. <laughs> yeah. Um, besides the schooling thing, I mean, I got to learn how absolutely brilliant my daughters are oh, uh, with homeschooling. See? See? Um, but we, I, I work nights, so uh, like I said earlier, like I didn't even know that there was another stimulus check coming until a couple of days ago, because I just, I don't, we have our own little bubble, and I was lucky enough to be in a profession where, uh, you know, foster kids are always going to need somewhere to stay. They're definitely um, essential. Yeah. And always going to, and right now it's even more important, because with all of the craziness on the outside, we can at least provide them stability in our little home. So, nothing really got scary, 
besides the grocery shortage, that drove yeah. me nuts because I ordered the groceries for work. <laughs> oh, see, I didn't think I thought because I know maybe not on a personal level. I don't think there was a lot of sort that I know of. I don't know where you're at exactly, but I know like everything seemed fine like that. But I could imagine ordering for, you know, a, a commercial business. I mean, that's that, that, that. And then, yeah, a lot of kids depending on you to like literally well, like, survive. I, I order from places like Walmart and their shelves were bare Damn. down here. And uh, everything, everywhere was just empty. Some of the stupidest things you could think of were just gone. Um, made it really hard to be a woman in 2020. But it's, <laughs> I, I'll it just was... leave it there, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure we could assume. <laughs> yeah, but I love what you said there about how you get to see personally how smart your children are because they'll blow your mind when you yeah. see them on a normal basis they just say little quips and it's like oh my god that's hilarious you know they say the things that you shouldn't laugh at but they make you laugh and that's when your kids develop their fucked up sense of humor i love that <laughs> yes. but the right. individualism it's got to be better for the kids i don't care what anybody fucking says unless i got a dad standing yeah. over beating him you know because i can't learn math but it's one-on-one -on -one learning that means something when you're just a little kid especially with learning disorders in a room full of 30 you don't get yeah. that you don't get that I got chalk thrown at me a lot. They were allowed to hit kids when I was in school. <laughs> I got beat up by my teachers. Um, that's it. That's an excellent thing. And on you, hell yeah. And what is the name of the, uh, if you're allowed to say, the place you you work? or? Uh, so the company that I work for is called Reliable Enterprises. Um, and they do a lot. They have the emergent foster care home. They're, we're opening another foster home. Um, and... Uh, they also do housing for people with developmental disabilities, single families. Um, they do, I was introduced to this job through something called a rent well class, which teach, teaches you how to not be a shitty tenant. And <laughs> I could, wait, that's a class people could take? Yeah. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, dude. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I, it was a six week course that I took and it was, you know, how to properly fill out applications and, um, programs that can help you with moving costs and all sorts of things. <laughs> Real things they um, should teach in school. Yeah. <laughs> For and sure. And in Lewis County, if you had that certificate of completion, it actually gave you a leg up on other tenants. Oh, I'll bet. Cause because there's a housing crisis. Like I'm 46 years out. old. I've never even thought of that as a, a thing. I know. I know. Like if you go to unemployment, they could teach you how to fill out resumes and all that stuff. But yeah. so the, it's it's things like that that really drives me crazy when you hear about these people. There's no opportunities or there's no there's no resources for me to move forward in my life. It's like well, you're not finding them. They're out there. Yeah. There are out yeah. there. I mean, you work for an industry that very obviously helps people. Uh, yeah. You know, but I've also been the guy that's like, fuck you unemployment. I'll just be broke because I ain't filling out your <laughs> stupid forms. So it's on us to do that. Well, that's great. That's cool. And what a noble thing to do. All right. All right. I am so mad at myself. And your answers are so good. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it's just cool. It's like we had a rehearsal. Yeah. Not something I plan on doing for every episode. So <laughs> excellent. All right. Question number two. Something you failed out in your life and you would like to redo or something that just you 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 feel like you could redo over i guess okay that's a redundant way to put the same question twice you know the, the we already played this game go i'm sorry no that's not fair to you in three two one all right denica something that you failed at or feel like you could have done better in your life or that you wish you could redo Bam. my There's... freshman year of high school okay um I made a lot of really bad choices. I did a lot of drugs and oh, was just no, wrong response. <laughs> running around doing things that no 14 year old girl had any business doing. Um, it did. My choices did end up with a wonderful now 10 year old baby boy. Um, and he's, the, he's the only part about that entire experience that I would not ever change. Yeah. But I feel like I would be a lot further in my life now if I had have made better choices and focused on school and um, just pulled my head out of my ass <laughs> yeah, at yeah. that point. Um, but at the same time, in perspective, um, gives me a leg up in my profession because um, I can sit down with these kids and go, no, I, I know where your life is going to go if you continue yeah, to do yeah. this. Yeah. Um, and I, I have come a long way 
since then, um, just in the last year. Even. Yeah, just since we've met each other, man, you've come a long yeah. way for sure, for sure. Uh, yeah, I think I was couch surfing or living out of my truck when I met you. So. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, well, I remember, I think, yeah, and you said something about a woman's shelter at one time, too, because I remember you were like, I got to get back to the thing. I was like, oh, wow, oh, okay, yeah, this chick's going yeah. through some shit. Last year, I was living in a domestic violence shelter with my kids. Look at us now. Oh, you got a nice house there. A little Christmas tree in the background. You know, and you said yeah. something in the earlier one about how, like, by the time all your friends in high school were getting in, mm-hmm. junior years were starting to get into all the stuff and getting into, the, you know, the you know the, the bad side of things, you had already gone through that. And, yeah, you know. at that point, I was, I was a parent, and yeah. I had been there and done that, and I did the whole drug thing, and it was lots of fun when I did it, but it I would is. never make those choices again. Well, that's great. So, yeah, now that gives you all everything you need to be a good, uh, I don't know, I don't think the word counselor is right. Is that the right word? Or, or uh, somebody to help people move forward their lives, you have to have experience. I hate hypocrites. Yeah. I hate people who don't know. I hate people that... No matter what you do in life, if it's just a, just a job, like I get, we got to make money, we got to make that. But if it's just a job that you hate everything about it, why are you doing that to yeah. yourselves? And everybody should benefit somebody else. I, I know it sounds, I don't want to say socialist or it sounds all nice and we all know who I am. Uh, but <laughs> but I really, it, at the heart of it all is we're all in this together and we should all help each other out. And you got to help yourself out first and yeah. be in a position to help everybody else, man. I mean... It, it feels good as much as I hate it. And it's really hard to write metal songs about it, but it feels good. <laughs> and this whole year, yeah. this whole fucking year can suck it. 2020, man, can suck it. But at the same time, only a sociopath or a psychopath or a monster would not look for the good things in it. Because think of every year of our lives. It's yeah. 90% shit. It's those little moments that matter. And this year really sh- sh- uh, shone a light both on what, how we run our society, how we run our, our, our work ethics, how we run our people, who really matters. I, I mean, we have to look at it positive. We just dwell on a negative. Well, we've seen what it's done to our, to our people, you know. So I just, I think it's great. Those are great answers. Those are awesome. You'll be number one on this interview. And since you got to do it twice, you'll get a special shout out. <laughs> and uh, man, that first one was so good. The second one was great too. Actually, it felt a little more kind of comfortable only because we knew what your answers were and well done <laughs> on almost repeating them per verbatim per per per, per god damn it three two one repeating them good per say that word again but wait wait wait, wait. well let's do it like this let's do it so thank you for repeating it verbatim for me thank you and just <laughs> perfect i'll edit that into it makes it look like i said it so perfect <laughs> all right denica glenn you're amazing human beings since I've known you. We kill it on that song, even though I hate it. Evanescence. <laughs> Don't get to me. Yeah, anyways. And uh, let's see what we got. We got 14 minutes out of this one. Perfect. And we even got a little tiny bit of B footage at the beginning there and some frozen <laughs> stuff. So it'll look good. It'll be fun. Uh, no guarantee when it comes out. And thank you for being on a moment with Denica Gwynn. Um, and everybody, please check out the Reliable Enterprises, right? Yes. Yeah, and check them out. They got a website, I'm sure. You can look at that right over here. And uh, they do donations. They always need stuff to help out foster kids. Um, you know, they, 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 they're just kids. They don't, they don't have a say in any of this, and their lives are still shit and could be better. Could be way better. Is that a seagull or one of the puppies screaming? Let's hope it's a seagull <laughs> eating the puppy. <laughs> All right, Danica. Thank you for being on, and uh, keep it up, man. We'll see you. We'll see you soon. We'll see Rat. you soon. Thank you for playing <laughs> again. Everything's <laughs> recorded. I've watched the shit out of it this time. You'll see me look at it every two minutes. All right. Have a good day. You too. All right. Bye bye. All right. Thank you, Danica Gwynn. Uh, that was her second take. Uh, we did it, a, a beautiful interview that had all this. Night, uh, you know, kind of more free flow, but uh, she pulled it off and comes off amazing. And what a good human being out there helping kids get a place. She's got the experience for it. She, that, that's great. That, that's the kind of people we need out there, man. Less douchebags like me, more good humans. Uh, that would just make everybody happy. So, rot. And, uh, Let's see who's up next. Thanks for watching. Like, yeah, it's all right though. Hey, you're there. I get, I get to. Yeah, but with you but, still. but we can't hug. 
you know? Hey, that's good for me, man. My ribs can't take a Ryan Hall anymore. Hug. <laughs> yeah, that, I'm I'm retired from that shit. I, I, to... I have broken I have broken some ribs. It was an accident, well, but I, it has happened. I can't remember who it was recently. That it was Brian were... Earl. Oh yeah, well he that's not fair. No, but no, I he's remember sorry. Some, he's... Well, let's fucking do this. I love you. You know that. Uh, we will bang again together someday. I don't know why I feel. Oh, like dude, the wrap up. It has to happen. It oh, has to happen. Time. That was the interview. Oh, Thanks, man. You take by the way. You guys oh, are great. Sweet. You guys are a great combo. You should run a fucking you. series style radio station. You know, and it like, dude, it, it's dope with your your musical knowledge between the two of you. But I'm just glad to see Enzo did something and stayed in it and is staying current. Oh yeah, dude. Can dude you, man? One of us is gonna have to die for this to stop, man. It's just that's just the way it is. Can you imagine the first show? When it's full open again, can you imagine that love? I'm gonna jump off the stage and I'm gonna get the biggest hug from a crowd I've ever got in my life. We're gonna cry together. Oh, I know, brother. Oh, I know. My nipples are so hard right now. Right now, dude. Like I'm cutting through my suicidal shit. Ryan Hall interview. Yeah, I'm already doing the Ryan Hall interview. You idiot. Here's your reminder. Ryan Hall interview. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to. Dis- dude, she is a pushy bitch. Oh, I love her though. I love her though. I'm thinking about naming her Satan. She keeps you in your keeps you in line. You know? she, does, she does cool shit. Alexa, turn off lights. Okay. You know, I mean, it's taken. I bought the one okay. for my truck now. So, anyways. So, okay. so basically, what you have is you have like a servant with an attitude problem. Kind of like uh, just reminds me of dating, really. You know, <laughs> if you can combine that technology with flashlight technology, I mean, honestly, I don't oh, bro, think you I'd ever date again. You got it. That's you a got it. Joke. That's my <laughs> joke. I just said that. I'm gonna write that down. All right. Well, let's do this, right man. Um, oh, and before we go on, you know, I know not a happy subject, but it was something I do got to say. I am so sorry about your puppy. Nah, uh, good dog. Met him several times. Dude, amazing he was dog. the he was the goodest boy. The good. He was amazing. Boys. Let's do. He this. was a good boy. Ladies and gentlemen, three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, I have with me the medalist motherfucker I've ever met in my life. The amazing, bangtastic, brutal, corpseish like like singing style that like well, let's just say if hypothetically if I was to be replaced by somebody, the first time I ever heard him sing hypothetically, I went, Well yeah. I mean, fuck it, <laughs> listen to it. Um also somebody who has turned me on and kept me quasi modern with a lot of the metal, because all I had to do is put out a post. Uh, Ryan, hit me, and uh, pretty much we are, we are metal brothers from a metal scene that I abandoned, so I'm a bitch, but whatever. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and you are the king band right now in Alaska, 100. percent Oh, I didn't mention Decepticide, uh, the the metalist of metals in Alaska, the truest of metals, and uh, still going strong. How many years now? We're going on 13 years, bro. Ooh. Tomorrow, 13 years tomorrow. There's- it's going to be a powerful gear for you guys, dude. I hope so. I hope so. My hugs are like herpes. Yes. <laughs> Burns when you pee? Okay. So here's my questions. I think they're stupid. Believe you me, me trying to get fucking positive things out there, whatever. Some of them are more, uh, some of them are more internal. So here's the first one. You've already read the questions, so you know. Uh, I found that this is way better than asking people the shit right on the spot. They're like, what? You're a douchebag. And they call me names. I got to edit it in. All right. To you, Ryan Hall. What is the difference between living and existing? And Dude, you know. um, existing is what most people do. You just live the mundane day-to-day, everyday practices, and you get into a some type of lame type of monotony, you know, where your life just kind of drags on, all the days meld together, and there's no uh, spark, there's no fire, you know. Um, you got to squeeze every single drop of juice you can out of this life if it's the only one you've got and um, every day should be an adventure whether it be learning something new or going out and blowing something up or taking a trip <laughs> just anywhere man like doing anything outside of the norm you every life is about experiences and if you're not experiencing anything you're just existing you're not living at all I love uh, I love the typical Alaskan answer. You know, you got to get out and do stuff, uh, blow shit up. Uh, you know, go. <laughs> it's like it's just what I mean. I've seen videos, you guys, lots of them. I love it when you guys go out and shoot shit. I'll tell you what, when it all goes down, when it really goes down, you don't think I'm fucking coming right back up there? Because I know all the motherfuckers up there are armed. 
down here, they're uh, meh. Here, I know they know look, how to use guns. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna lean this way. This was my backdrop today. Was my I gun safe. Would, I knew you would come up with something sick. I like how you got it open. You probably kind of straightened everything up a little bit. It was just gonna look all right, uh, yeah. If it didn't weigh like a thousand pounds, I probably would have moved it a little bit, but it weighs a lot. <laughs> That's a good 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 part of a of a gun safe. You you want it to be hard to get into and harder to move. <laughs> oh yeah. No but, one's uh, stealing it unless they got yeah. like Fifteen dudes, but I don't even positive. know if they would People fit in this room. Think, I mean, we're metalheads, right? We're vocalists. Our whole job is to take the world in, apply it to a canvas of insanity, and then eloquently make people beat the fucking shit out of each other to it and feel something physically. It's it's a beautiful thing. And then being met listen, being metal is. is you consume life's experiences. Your bodily juices get them all, you know, altered and all slimy, and then you literally mama bird regurgitate it on the listener and the person watching because literally you're opening your mouth and you're force feeding it in their little beaks, and, they're like and this. they got no reason but to take it. No, 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 they got to no. take it. Yeah, they got to take, take it. Yeah, dude, okay, just, they got to take it. I know I, I got a good interview on this. I knew I was talking to the right person. I, you keep this up, we may have a podcast, bro. I mean, fucking what a trip. What a trip, dude. You're such a... But th th some of the things you say, like, I'm not, I'm not surprised because I know you're an educated, you're an intelligent as motherfucking man. But, you know, to say things like, you know, ex learn new things, take new chances, mm -hmm. get out there and live. You've got to take the chances. Man, Okay, silver lining, I think, in this whole thing was a lot of people had a lot of time to evaluate what their lives was, was what their lives was, and take two, what their lives was. I'm going to do it again. I don't give a fuck. And, uh, and, and, you know, a lot of relationships fell apart. I was like, well, it probably fell apart a long time ago. And you just hadn't had the situation to realize that you despise that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, okay. Um, more or less, what the what twenty twenty did is it like it took the tectonic plates of everybody's lives and it just slammed them together and let all this stuff seep out from underneath. All the things that used to sit under the surface are now all viewable because you've got nothing to do but sit with it. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. Very right. thankful, you know, very, very thankful that um, I was considered ultra essential. I did not miss a single second of work. Not only that, my workload increased by about 150% this past year. So, <laughs> well, your construction um, or no, you were no, warehouse. Um, I am the yeah, ship out supervisor for the Alaska Native Industries Warehouse. Holy so, shit. Yeah, uh, so basically what, what we do is we, we supply like 70 villages with all of their grocery needs. So when the pandemic hit, like literally – we could not get shut down because the villages, they need fresh water. They need toilet paper. They're still going to need, you know, food. They, they're going to need things that they can't get without us. So the only way that we could have gotten shut down would have been if like the COVID came into the warehouse. And even then the red cross would have come in and started shipping our stuff for us. If we couldn't use the bypass, yeah, they'll, they'll fucking die. They'll yeah, die. basically, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. They they need what we provide for them. So, I mean, you want to talk about ultra essential, especially in Alaska, working for the Alaska natives. So, That's dope, dude. That's dope. thankfully, I, uh, I, I didn't I miss weed. any work at all. But I got um, right out of the restaurant industry last two years ago, <laughs> and somehow I managed up in a weed store. And I I am not maybe saving lives like you are, but a lot of moms have gone from smoking one joint a day to I need an ounce of weed. Dennis, I my kids. Dennis, <laughs> Dennis. You're making way more of a difference than you think you are. Uh, no, I get tearful thanks. My favorite people are the 80-year-old dudes that have gotten rid of all their medicine and are just coming in for bags of candy, and then they don't even get out the fucking door. I'm not going to tell an 85-year-old man he can't open his candy with weed in it. Right. Or <laughs> just pouring the gummies in his hand. Oh, man, I got a cancer face guy that's actually making it into a comedy bit because he was the most depressing guy I'd ever met in my life. He comes in one day with, like, 30 stitches across his face. He's like, well, fuck, the cancer's in my face. I'm just living long enough until my daughter knows my, or my granddaughter knows my name. And then he's all, boom. I was like, Jesus, bro. And then he's wow. like, it's in my face. It's it's in my throat. It's in my liver. It's in my spine. It's in my feet. I was like, hey, 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 save a little cancer for the rest of us. And he looked at me and he just started laughing to where it was hurting him. Like he was like, oh, my God. And now he comes in. He's like, I got cancer in my dick. He just he just loves it. <laughs> Only Dennis Reed could make a joke <laughs> about cancer to a cancer patient and have them think it's funny. It felt right. <laughs> it felt like he needed to laugh, dude, at himself. I mean, fuck. You know, and talking about killing yourself, oh, well, I think that's hilarious. Oh, God. I'm going to edit that out. Um, I probably won't. That might, if, that you edit that out, if you edit that out, I'm going to be very disappointed. Boom. I would love to have a whole interview with you just about, I uh, do an interview thing, too. It's a long-term one about 
where you just about being a singer, the projection of about no more, mostly about studio recording. My biggest hang up in the world is trying to stand there like this with cans on and be like, how am I supposed to get the emotion out? I'm sober. Um, I, 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 there's nobody's yelling at me or I'm not dodging anything. I mean, do you do cans or do you do a held on? Um, um, the last couple we did, we did cans where, you know, you had the mic that hung and you had the little screen in front of it, you know, and all that. But recording now with, um, that's the last time we recorded with Chuck. He basically told me, bring your own microphone. I plugged in and I, ba- and I basically just performed while that's he was what, recording it. So that's how it should be. That's a new, agreed. that's a new style. Uh, 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 what are they? Sound engineer or what are those guys? Uh, you know, mixers, whatever, whatever he is. Producers, sound engineer, they, sound engineer is that the old ones was always don't cup the mic. Well, you know what? A whole generation came up where that was actually part of it. You know, Phil and Semmel is the best at it because he only cups it when he wants to do that. He does a half cup. I, he could cut my I, nuts. I half cup. I half cup too. I just want you to know yesterday, I wore my Phil and Semmel shirt for you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The cat with the thing, cords got to go around. The, the, the you know. thumb okay. goes against I, the chin. I, I, we have to stop My, this. I'm lazy. This will okay, all right. Interview, right, and I have to edit all. This okay, shit question down. number two. In three, two, one. All right, Ryan. That was a beautiful answer. I know this sounds generic when I do this part of crap right here, but it all works. It all works. I hope. All right, man. Deceptive Rye. I don't know if anybody's ever called you that before, but they <laughs> fucking sure as hell should. Deceptive Rye. Deceptive. Okay, stop me, Dennis. So. Here's the second one, and this one's more for you. Uh, Something you failed at or, you know, attempted in life but didn't get back to or just, you know, you you really were into, but because of life or your own decisions, you didn't do. I have a lot of those. And would like a chance to redo or reapproach now that you're, what are you, about 49, 50? How how old are Ryan? (laughs) Oh, no, that's me. That's me. I'm sorry. I'm 37. Oh, my God, you're so young. (laughs) Oh my God! I'm literally turned 47 this year. I am 10 years older than you. I could have been your cool older brother. That let you listen you to like been. butt rock. Like, dude, have you ever heard of fucking Wasp? No, because I listen to good music, you douchebag. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> Dennis is showing me lame music again. <laughs> okay, so Dennis keeps putting me in jean jackets, mom. <laughs> hey, fuck you, man. The jean jacket was the beginning of the battle vest. All right, it was. The, we didn't know. We didn't know. My first concert was Brian Adams. I was jean jacket, jean shirt, jean pants, and a light. You had the jeans. Canadian tuxedo. <laughs> didn't even know it. Didn't even know it. Didn't, yeah. even, know. didn't even know. Canadian tuxedo. Um, I All guess right. um, I wish that uh, I hadn't partied so hard while I was in high school and had kind of gotten my grade shit together and been more of a success, not necessarily um, because I want a college degree or anything, but um, it would be better – to in my head have a better example for my son as far as as far as getting that together um really what i want for my kid is for him to get a trade um a good trade that's not going anywhere like you know like welding or 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 something along those lines where it's not going to go away you know not not some six-year degree that he's not going to be able to use because the you know the job industry is just yeah. flooded with people with those degrees um something that's essential something that you know will always be around um but I, anyway i i know i digress i, I uh, call them uh survival survival trades survival skills for sure boys, all for sure. construction uh, for the sure. ones learning how to forge and weld and everything uh because yeah you can take your we've all read the stand you know burning money man burning money to keep warm, burning, burning money. degrees that guy's food you can't get anything. <laughs> you, you know i could at least i could cook uh, that guy, that didn't do it. That guy, beautiful. Could, listen, we can we can feed we can feed a family of sex off that guy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love what I'm but, learning uh, about people. I would say the one real big regret regret I have is that um, even though I'm fourth generation musician on my dad's side, um, oh, I didn't know. Yeah, that. Uh, I didn't. Well, my dad was a folk musician, Neil Young, uh, Terry Reed, those type of guys, Charlie Daniels, those were like my dad's stuff. But um, I wish I had gotten into music a lot sooner than I did. Hey, tell her to shut up. I hit her button. Oh, she's okay. talking. Alexa, <laughs> you're interrupting again. Stop. And three, two, one. Um, I wish I'd gotten into music a lot sooner than I did. Um, literally it took, I was, I was into snowboarding and biking and all of that. And then I got hit by a truck and broke my leg. And while I was in a full, yeah, while I was in a full leg cast, I picked up my dad's guitar and started strumming and playing. So over the span of like four months of being in a full leg cast, I taught myself how to play the guitar. 
And um, of course, in retrospect, after meeting real guitarists, like I couldn't fucking play the guitar. Like I thought I could, but I couldn't. You know. Um, it and takes then one you know. Enzo to destroy you. Yeah, and then one thing led to another, and then all of a sudden I'm a vocalist and the you know, vocalist. It is what it is. The vocalist, dude. The vocalist of fucking Decepticide. I, I guess mad. I found my calling. I found mad. my calling with that. Um, who knew that um, I would actually find a position for my super loud, overbearing atmosphere to where I could actually like make money off it and people love it. Like people pay me to scream at them. Oh yeah, no. I, How I, many uh, people get to say that? I'm well, like I'm a drill a, sergeant, but it's all positive. You weren't even trying out, Enzo. From what I understand, from what I've learned over the years, you, I think it was in your documentary, but you, you, you were just jam hanging out with Enzo in a car or something, and a song came on. And you started belting along with. It. I believe he was still in Mij. Uh, or he was. I, was, yeah. I should say I was yeah. still in Mij because <laughs> that's how that works out. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and, and he must have been right there. He must have known. He's like, "Oh, dude, it's Dennis is gone." Uh, and I know. I don't say that any bitterness. I mean, like, I don't dude, believe the, me the song. The song was the faded line by Lamb of God. That was the song. That's uh, a yeah. Good so. Song. God damn it. Hey, man, what a fit. And you twos, you, I have, I'm, I'm jealous is a, the right word, but the wrong Conte, but your friendship. Something to this day, only in, this, in, in a couple of bands that I ever reach that level of friendship with uh, and brotherhood, and you see it. And it's a ride and die sort of thing where it's like, you know, in your heart, y'all, you watch all these other bands, they just flitter in and flitter out, and, uh, not you guys, man. Uh, We're long guys. hauling it, man. Yeah. No, we are the now next... the old schoolers. It is so weird being the old school metal band. You're Callahan, in the bro. Scene. If uh, you were to put it to any, I'm sorry. I'll, you know what I'm saying? I'm not. You know I what do, I mean? I love Callahan, brother. Yeah. I love them. They're, Never they're, saw them live. Man. You're a hell of a dad. Yes. You're just a. You're a hell of a front man. Um, you seem generally overall, as long as I've known you, to be a happy guy. We've all gone through some shit, and we've known each other quite a grip now, man. Yep. Yeah, we have. And, and I remember Dude, when I you... live I live my life by the unaltering philosophy and day to day is every single day above ground is a utilizable day and a good day as far as I'm concerned. A good day, yeah. And I try to live that philosophy to every decision I make and every ounce of um awakeness I have is I got to wake up this morning, so what let's see what the day brings me. Because it could always be worse. This is my this is a year of revelations and shit like that and at least driving home points the things that you believed in that you were right in you should stick with the things that were holding you back well shed them like I pay my bills on time now and it seems to be way easier than the way I used to do it I don't get it man right I mean yeah. who knew well, who knew I'll say one more thing uh cuz people don't know our history really that don't you know know but I will say this I remember the day that you took the initiative to break the awkwardness and you know what moment i'm talking about is that matt i think it was i was so drunk and you looked at maybe it was coot you know, wherever it was and you looked at me and you said bang with me dennis and uh, that was before i was right hmm, weird. that was I before remember. yeah you were just dennis <laughs> <laughs> dude dennis the douchebag uh and uh that was it and then every time dude but those those shows are so unique the punk rock metal super metal mm -hmm. fucking Who's that guy with the guitar up there playing folk? Who cares? He's drinking Jaeger. Fucking love that guy. All right. Yeah. That guy's great. <laughs> you guys keep doing it, man. I would love to schedule a real interview with you. Um, okay. Yeah. And uh, you're my last interview of 2020. Leave it with a bang, baby. Bang. Yeah. No, no. <coughs> All right, man. That's it. That's it. That was that was the interview. Easier than than some of my exes. I used to say my ex-wife, but let's be honest, she was a way better person than me, and thank God she's free now. I hope she has a great and awesome wife. Yeah, yeah. My testosterone levels are dropping or something. You better just got. I burn out of hating, hating myself, hating the world, hating everything. Right. You literally, to be... you, you literally lived so many years of your life, literally where your personality was based on hatred. Oh, man, <laughs> it burned me out. And then, but this year, it made it all seem so contrite, so fake. Like, man, it's not, you know, I'm losing friends. I'm my, Plus, all my friends are old. Like, I lost two friends. Andy, Big Andy's dead. I can't bury him. He just died. I'm, when I go to Alaska, I wrote, I'm writing a song called uh, about Alaska every time I visit now. It's like my, my home is a graveyard full of frozen bones. Because every time I fly back now, I'm I'm going to somebody's graveyard and doing that. Like, oh, frozen oh, bones and shattered dreams. Yes, sir. God damn it. So, yeah. Dope, Ryan. Dope. We will be doing something, man, because you, yeah. I, I knew this. Some people, it's kind of weird and awkward, and 
You know, my favorites are the ones like, I don't know shit about technology. Well, those are the ones that don't overthink and give me the best footage. So, you were, in like, you were like, set your phone up, turn it on here, don't move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, my, my, my uh, producer, she makes me seem smarter. Like, ah, uh, yeah. Hey, uh, any, this is your chance to plug anything, anything we can expect from Decepticide, anything you just want to shout out and go. Well, I mean, you know, everybody keep following Decepticide. We're going to basically, one of us is going to have to die for it to stop. So no matter what, you know, we're still doing our thing. Hopefully we'll spit it's a out. New bass player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bass, bass, bass player for anybody in Alaska. Um, look, looking, um, we are searching for an active bass player. Um, but uh, we're going to keep putting out live streams every now and then and make Thank sure you. you guys are Thank updated you. with us and know that we're still working. So, um, Everybody, look. Let's look forward to 2021 and hopefully get to some shows. I'm like just going to be jealous that I can't that I can't get into one. Yeah, I mean, my spikes. My arm, you know, I don't know if I could. You know, it'd be weird. You never saw. Yeah, Bubble Boy's biggest regret was that he couldn't do that. No, and the other thing is Bubble that my new band, death metal vocalist, but he couldn't pull it off. Has promised me that we will come to Alaska and play, and I will be playing with fucking you guys headlining. That's a fact. Absolutely. And hopefully try to Absolutely. finagle fucking goddamn Barton into doing another another resurrection of the machine because machine corpse won't die he keeps trying to kill it and i'm like no you can't no 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 yeah all right ryan fucking hall i love you hey hook me up with some uh songs and uh right. as soon as i, I got get you. merch you got yourself a free sticker and thanks for playing and uh, i hope you enjoy this whenever i get it out it won't be till next year <laughs> okay sounds good dennis all thanks right, for man. having me brother fuck yeah brother i'll so, talk to you later i love you ryan stay metal hall. my friend we have a long and beautiful history together. That will be my last one of the year. And hopefully the audio is good on it. God damn it. I remember to check it after the first question. So whatever. Ryan Hall, guys, check out fucking Decepticide. Pure Alaskan fucking metal, man. These guys have been around a long time. They put out some killer shit. I don't remember exactly how many albums they have out, but I know there's a couple... They got merch. They got everything else. They do live cast, man. And they are literally brothers of mine. And I love each and every one of them. Enzo Montana, Ryan fucking Hull, and Brian Harris, and whoever the fourth guy is going to be, man. Fucking metal, Alaska. Thank you. A moment with darker. Ryan Hull. It's gone much darker. See who's uh, next. Yeah. As, yeah. as far as we go as humanity in, in great directions, we also go equally in terrible directions. I think that's just... Oh, man, yeah. I got a whole concept about balance and it even goes to every from the micro to life creates life by dividing and then she seeks balance throughout all something lives something dies something changes something evolves yep. something de-evolves uh, mm -hmm. and I think even on a social level amongst our intelligent monkeys uh, if, if it wasn't if half the people were like fuck masks and it's all a scam and the other half wasn't like no man I think nature needs that somehow because you look at it through history, just even in this, say, a pandemic in 2018 or 19 with the, the Spanish flu, if you we have news, we could watch what they did, and they did per mm -hmm. every goddamn thing we've done. Giant, don't wear a mask, it's all over, you know, and then bam, second wave. I mean, we're just, we're silly monkeys, and we don't, we think we're in control because we're smart. Back then, they're like, this is 1920 for fuck's sakes, we're the most evolved we'll ever yeah. be. And now in 2020, yeah. we're like, Come on, and no. And what's funny is even a hundred years years later, a lot of humans still believe in this idea of dominion that we have some sort of dominion over the natural world, and it's like, you know, it's like, I, yeah, I, it's delusional. <laughs> we are we are dreamy creatures, man. We live in the dream world. Silly monkeys, barely evolved. Yeah. We still have anxiety. That means that we still think something's going to jump out of the tree and bite us in the back of the neck. Unfortunately, for our modern world, that's crippling debt. Things, you know, fucking things that yeah. I, that you can't run from, man. See, this is yeah, why I want to have a full form <laughs> interview with you. You are a very smart man. I loved. Well, I watched the whole inter uh, the whole thing. Every time we've ever talked, I'll be a brief. And during my earlier years, mayhaps I may have come off not as yeah, sane I'm as most. Super excited but, about this. Uh, you're All very right. intelligent, Three, man. Two, and, uh, and I one. Love talking to you, and I love your mercy. What to you, my friend? I'm just jumping right into it. Is the difference between living and existing? And it's kind of a deep question. <laughs> I mean, it is kinda. a deep question, but it's not a deep question. There's exactly. a few different ways I can answer that question. My 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 first answer for that question is very straightforward. And the difference between existing and living is time. I also feel like that question kind of want you know 
leads me or anybody to kind of wax on about, you know, oh, well, if you can just exist, but if you're not, like, living and thriving, then, you know, whatever, uh, you know, they're the same thing. It's just, it's a matter of the time that you put into it or whatever, you know, whatever you do. But, you know, you, we all arguably exist, uh, and we all, you know, live until we die. So, the, 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 you know, the difference is time. It's the time that you spend doing what you love. It's the time that you waste. You know, it's the time that, that you put into the wrong things. It's the time that a person uh, squanders. But, you know, in the end, it's our lives. And so it's, I would say that they're like gradients, you know, like on a philosophical level, oh, wow. like, like gradients of, of, of being, you know, simply existing sometimes is, is a very nice way to be. But, you know, we still got to live. We got to wash our hair and take a shower and, you know, talk to people and uh, love things and lose things and, you know, all that shit. So, you know, time, experience. That's great. That's a great answer. And I like how you approach that. As a matter of fact, you just basically wrote an entire folk song in that one paragraph about, but no, but man, it's true. How much time, time, yeah, everybody works so hard to, to construct the time in their lives and control time, I'm which is silly. With you. Yeah. yeah, but well, how do you yeah. waste time? Where it you should be looking yeah. at it more like that, which is my whole view of life. Is I come from a from a negative place because the positivity is there, but it's something that it's more of a luck work kind of hopefully manifest destiny thing. But you're it's always darkest before dawn. There's always oh, an, uh, an ascension. yeah. No, it's good, dude. I I I lost two friends this year. I don't need. I don't need. Uh, I'm getting a great song out of it about Alaska. That's an interesting segue because it actually ties into something. So, like, I lost a dog that, like, I that you know, and uh, you, you, you love Shiva as much as I ever loved Lainey, you know. And uh, when you get that close to a thing that basically just loves you for no fucking reason other than you just exist, uh, if you, and you and you engage in that, you know, over the course of time, you know that's what's really got me thinking about things. Like, I wouldn't have answered that question that way if it hadn't been for my dog dying a few weeks ago. No, I, uh, can't, I can't even imagine right now. Because dude. it's got me thinking, you know, nothing, like, uh, about nothing but, like, my time and how I waste it. Uh, you know, uh, invest your time. Invest, like, sacrifice your comfort for things that are bigger than you. Because that will, that those, you know, those sacrifices will make your life better, even if it's not right off the bat. It, you know, and that's that's what you've been doing all these years, man. That's what I've been doing. That's, you know, growth is growth is not a uh, exponential function. It's not even a linear function. Uh, you know, it's there's there's ups and downs and backs and forwards and this is and that's and in the end, it's the individual. You know, it's it's, it's we decide. You know, if we're gonna put time into escaping from pain, or, 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 you know, when we have the energy facing it, and making I, that a priority, because even just a little bit of that goes a long way. And we live in a world where it's super fucking easy to avoid our thoughts, avoid our feelings, our perception, our responsibility to ourselves, and uh, we've created yeah. our own distractions. No, man, I absolutely, I call it. Uh, I am literally writing a book called uh, called. Uh, Oh god damn it. Oh motivation through self loathing. Trying to take a hit at the everybody's perfect movement and all that shit. And some of the things like with quitting drinking, I tell people and it's going along with exactly what you say, and now this will be where I'm gonna wrap up the first question, would be that that it's the hardest, easiest thing you'll do. And it's yep. so hard to get it's like it's relativity. It's yeah. you, you can't have one without the other. Yeah, and once, right. you, once you get over it, though, like now, not drinking isn't hard. Now, not drinking every day is an amazing thing where I feel great, uh, you know. But and moving forward, man, and evolution, you, you know, it, I, I love the word evolution, and I apply it to way too many things, and I probably don't use it in a scientific form, but on the micro level, we can, we are in control of that. Uh, if you stay positive, stay moving forward, we don't, we're not meant, no form of living being or anything is meant to be uh, stationary. Even you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, he fucking agrees. He, she agrees with me. I love that you have Alf sitting behind you this whole time, dude. This makes this my favorite frame yet. 
Uh, yeah, no, just sit in there, chill. Just chill. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's good. You're good at mirroring. Uh, that would have been difficult. I always immediately point off the wrong weird, way. I have weird spatial okay. shit. Question man. number two, I which I cannot remember how I worded it, and I left my notepad in my truck way down the hill there, but I'm pretty sure you remember what it is. At, I think it's basically, uh, uh, you know, is there something in your life, you know, that and it doesn't have oh, to be I feel like you failed at or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't like the word failed. I should have put, phrased it that way uh, because especially if it's something when you were younger, it's not really failing so much as learning, blah, blah, blah. But I think you get the gist to the question. Something so, you look forward to redoing or, you know. Yeah, um, there's this Darkest Hour lyric that always really stuck with me. I've always been, like, into, like, writing and art and, and things like that. and And so, you know... My hell is a blank notebook page. You know, my 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 failures are many, and uh, every day there are failures. You know, uh, on just like on a huge macro level, on like if if I were to like you know kind of zone in or or aim at a failure, uh, just right off the top of my head. It, it, it would be ever not being who I am, ever like questioning how I feel and, and, and not speaking my mind because that's caused me much more pain uh, in the long run uh, than losing friends or, you know, uh, losing bandmates or, you know, missing out or you know, whatever. Uh, and, and that's just a small thing, but, you know, there are failures every day. It's a matter of mitigating them and, and, and trying to find, you know, just just a, just a little bit of something. And I don't know, I've been kind of been on this kick of, like, you know, the past is the past, the future is the future, and this is where I'm at right now. And, you know, if I... So, in, like, a day, if I might be playing video games or something, because I really like to play video games, and uh, and that's how I kind of escape. You know, everybody has to escape a bit. Yeah. Uh, but... I, but I but I keep my guitar sitting in front of me. Do you so find yourself? Do you find yourself just all of a sudden? Like, that's such a hard question for me because of the way I think about stuff. But I would I would say, oh, I got a doggy right here. Yeah. Uh, I would say that you know my failures now you know at this point in time like over the course of the past few months uh, are mean you know not picking up my guitar when I have the the, the want to do it. There's a lot of uh, going around, buddy. You know, stuff like that, or you know, whatever. But I I've been doing this 20 years now, and there's other things to do. You Does know, that worry you? Or do not you think it's anymore. Something that's just natural part of of kind not of anymore. Of growing so up? Like, on a big personal level, man. Like uh, for me, musically as a musician, like you know, my band She is still my band, and. Uh, We've been through lots of ups and downs. Uh, we've we've grown and gotten through a lot of shit and grown up together, uh, and that's a really unique experience. And so, you know, now each of us are 33 years old. Our birthdays are all a month apart. You're all 33. And yeah, uh, there's there's to. some magic, there's some really magic weird things with she, uh, uh, you know, that our initial spell out jam. You guys took uh, the fuck out. That you know we like the music that we like, and, and you know that I've you know been been I was in my first band with Jay Cost, our bassist. Uh, I, you know, like Rada and I never planned on playing music together. Uh, that was just an accident. You know, it's just so so uh, so. Anyways, my you know my point is with that is like, uh, you know, my failure is just not so. You know, she's been a band for 12 years, and, you know, we've not been active for certain amounts of time because we moved down to Seattle, and then I fell apart, and I had to put myself back together, and, you know, there's 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 been all kinds of things, but, uh, you know, my failure is not making music. That's that's my biggest failure, and, and, and uh, that's what I'm working on, is just making music and, and doing that, and, and not... Not sharing it with people. How long do like, you feel this has been going on? For a while. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like she hasn't put out material uh, <laughs> since 2011, <laughs> but we've written, but but we've written like at least ten songs since then. So, 
you know, it's we've been trying to find our own way to to do what we do because a lot of what we do happens it's in the moment. It's catching lightning in a bottle. That's kind of what this band is about. And so trying to figure that out with four different fucking people mm, mm. is a is you know when you know that you're talented or when you know that you have potential as a group and as individuals, you know that's that's the tough part. And so. And then balancing all of that and ideas and egos and and you know everything. In, in all, well, yeah. I mean, you got That's what I tell people. Two thousand twenty. I'm sorry, but 2020 was the worst year since 2019. The only difference was plus COVID, plus fucking COVID. Just in and in, in every aspect, like it's hard to be funny when everybody's got a lot of fear. It's hard to be creative. And also, I hate the idea of writing songs about this situation. It seems stupid to me. Like, maybe a generalization of the overall experience, but not like... So, but my that's all I think about, you know? We're, we're kind right. of stuck in this rut. And, you know, I don't know about you, if you managed to stay working the whole time or... Uh, my, my my shit's been pretty tumultuous. I just I just lost my job at Guitar Center. Yeah, I was uh, wondering. I saw and then and know. and which is totally fine. Um, God, I don't you were re- there forever. I don't know. Oh, I wasn't. I was only there for like a year. What? Uh, Where did you work somewhere else? I worked at Mammoth before that. But That's anyways, it. anyways, the point is, is like all I hear about this year is oh it's so bad and oh I have to be alone and a wah 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 wah, wah, wah. like. I'm a solitary person. I thrive on being alone. Yeah. I thrive on being alone so much that I have to force myself to go out and be with people because I like being alone so much and I'll just go crazy. So for me, watching people finally realize themselves and have to be alone with themselves, I, I don't sympathize. I empathize with you because I know how hard it is, but I don't, I don't have any sympathy for that. No. No, I feel um, the same way about a lot of relationships that ended. Like, you guys, it's time to do some, some work. Time to do some work. I got friends yeah. that are crumbling because they're, like, they're stuck with themselves. And I'm like, hey, this yeah. is an opportunity. Look at it as an yeah. opportunity to evolve. It's my own experience with myself and my life and, and, and being alone and learning how to be alone. Because keep in mind, you know, I've been playing music since I was 14, and I became popular, cool, everybody knows me, had over a 1,000 friends on Facebook or whatever, but I hated it because nobody fucking knew me. So that's crazy, right? It's false. So like, it's like, you know, that's why I fell off the map is because I don't want to be a part of that bullshit. I'm a musician. I make music. That's what I want to do because that's how I connect. And it's that's that's the bottom line. So, you know, like, I understand that it's it's been really hard for a lot of people, and I and 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 I'm not going to argue against that. Yeah. But I, but I, but we all got our own problems, and you know, for me this year, it gave me a chance to take four months off of work paid and be alone with myself and figure out what the fuck I want because, you know, as an individual, I go through this world not valuing my contributions or who I am or what I do, and I keep getting into work that doesn't fucking pay me and treats me like I'm an asshole when I better. when I'm stressed out because I'm not getting paid enough or treats me like an asshole because I'm a fucking six and a half foot tall giant dude that has huge emotions. I've never hurt anybody. No, I know, you man. Know, my best friend's so, six foot eight, bro. I understand that. I understand yeah, better, it, I think, than you understand on that one. Yeah, so, you know, it's... The world's changing, and it's changing drastically, and nothing's ever going to be the same, and if we keep continuing this delusion that we have some... that we deserve some kind of peace or whatever, it's like, uh, we you, you that? make that. You yeah, make that. You, we are we are lucky we live in the safest country oh in the God. Country. At the best time you know? in the world right now. There's positives and there's negatives, but you know it's it's well, yeah. it's oh, all yeah. relative. These are it's the answers I love. And these are what I think they are. The, the, I think there is an interesting thread about a lot of creative people all of a sudden being able to be creative all the time and like eh, I just don't want to pick it up. Like me, man, I'm in the studio, and thank God for these is, is what got me going again. But just doing them by myself or everything else, it got. It was time if we don't evolve and you know this could have been a solar flare that wiped out our, all of our shit for a decade this could have been Yellowstone going off this could be I mean it was a nightmare but we're still able to function and and people need to chill out but 
Yep. Nobody's going to move forward. There's no time to move forward when you're fucking working and and stressing and well, and and yeah, and 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 that's what you know our culture, our American culture, has like put ahead of everything. And you know, baby boomers got duped. You know, back back then, our you know our parents got duped then, and they accepted that this is how things are, and you sacrifice who you are for work and whatever. But the difference is, people made livings back then. Hmm. Uh, yeah, they got duped, but they had a four-story fucking or a two-story house, and, yeah, and that's why that shit disappeared until you know Gen X, you know uh, my you know my generation, millennials. Uh, you know, it's these are undeniable truths that we've been denying for a long time, and uh, you know, we live in a world of fakery, man. <laughs> it's all I, it's oh, yeah. When I see people out there creating nothing against you or anything, but creating content for content's sake, I disregard it completely. No, I have really. no interest in that. I have no interest, and I'll go even as far as to say that I have very little interest in even discussing uh, a pop culture bullshit because there's very little basis in 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 art, and this is where I kind of get crotchety. Yeah, um, I'm an artist. Yeah. I love art. I love art from the moment that I ever remember seeing fucking art in books as a kid. You know, than just visual art, let alone you know oral art like music and poetry and and you know all you know whatever. So that's that's where I'm coming from, man. I, uh, I you know we have is. we have really lost sight of that, and uh, you know the internet's teaching us a lot of lessons about ourselves and our nature and. I can only imagine what's going to come next, and I and I well, don't and want it's to. A, it's a process, unfortunately. First, with every, it's, it's always process. denial. There's going to be denial. Then there's going to be that. Then there's tradition. How are you raised? There's so many factors that it's going to take decades. The fact that we we just drop back in a lot of things that we thought we had moved forward with the blink of a fucking eye uh, was uh, both amazing and non surprising to me because I've seen it on a micro level. I'm going to see it in in a big society. That's what we do. So yeah. it's unimportant. And like, it's yeah, not... man, technology, we, we, we can't even fathom. I'm really into nerdy shit, and, and, and I'm not saying I have any, like, uh, kind of I'm thread not... on crazy future shit, but... No, but I'm on that same path with AI, we with fucking are at quantum the precedence computing. of existence, of human existence, of, of technology, of, of at least 10 or 12,000 years, or however long that we know of, <laughs> of of evolution as homo sapiens even though we've been on this planet for hundreds of thousands of years regardless of what people want to say you are not they don't so, invite it on my channel it's fine nope so <laughs> Moving I, on. actually you know what they are invited to well, this yes of course but you'd be challenged but i know oh, what no, you mean I'm, i've decided wholeheartedly and first of all i'd like to say just i will promise you and everybody ever i will always keep this sincere until I start making millions of dollars, then fuck off. I will be. Off, I will yeah. be by. Yeah, I'll send you a yeah. million bucks and have you sponsored. No, listen, man. Stupid monkeys and evolution yep. scary, and people only have a very small lifespan. And the way we're taught, look, I don't think the word capitalism or socialism or fascism are terms that should be applied anymore to a technology, a technologically driven society that we are having, heading towards a virtual reality. All we want is to be able to just sit and never do anything again. And for some reason, it seems to be that everybody wants it to be easy. You know, I love the movements where people are like, we need to get rid of lawns and grow our own food. That means you got to get out there and work every day, motherfucker. You know, I want it easy till I got easy. And this happens all the time. You know, I want easy till I get easy. And then easy doesn't mean shit. So... <laughs> That is a that's a bit that that should just be a T-shirt. I challenge Easy anybody. Doesn't mean to, shit. I challenge anybody to contact me and 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 uh, challenge that because easy doesn't mean shit. It's you know it's nice, it's convenient, especially when we're overwhelmed and going through shit or whatever. Easy is important, but we you you know like you said, oh like things need to be easier. I'm going to go back to growing my own food. Well, it turns out that's a lot of lot a lot of fucking hard work. A lot of work. So. Yeah. You know, and that's you know there are there are a lot of uh, you know there, we're man we're we're at the precipice of human existence, man. Like 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 we need to take the good and bad from every idea, everything, everyone. There's, you know, that's a, that's living a reality of avoiding, here. huh? 
that's how we get here to the good points, not the bad. There's the negative. Everybody work together. It used to be striving to meet other cults and stuff, but you know, also we are as a country an empire. I mean, you know, the United States of America. That's a beautiful thing or whatever. But we seem to be everywhere else too. Uh, we 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 can't back off of that at this point. You become the bully and. It's a lot to work with, but we could fix micro things like ourselves. We need to redraw back into more, less out there, and and a little. I mean, it's a fine keep line. In, keep it, in mind, man. Like you know, America's big, big deal in the world. Uh, you just said it yourself. You know the, you know the, you know the big guy on campus, essentially, or whatever. Like, dude, I'm six foot six. I'm three hundred and something pounds. When I was twelve years old, I was six feet tall. People thought I was a grown man when I was fucking twelve years old. You know, everybody wants to take the big guy down. Oh, there's a reason why there's lots of military spending. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not going down that road of... of no, no, no. Of, We're going to have to have an entire uh, podcast, dude. But I would like you to be on one that we big, discuss these it's things. It's a big world, man. And it's there's 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 these are big concepts. They're big things. And, and uh, small talk about them, for me, it, it's, 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 it's difficult. Yeah, no, I, I'd like I, to talk about where you think you know with the. Uh, I think we have a very common thread with this with the the uh, technology stuff, the future. I've always been interested in. I, I call myself a Star Trek kid. I mean, well, mm -hmm. the fact that all my friends don't answer when I call them with video tech is like, were you not alive when that was the coolest fucking thing ever, dude? Fucking Knight Rider had one in his car. In his car, yep. can you imagine, you motherfuckers? I'm a seventy. I'm, I'm the top of Generation X, man. You got to remember that. We're the, here. We are. People are afraid to answer the fucking phone. You know. Yeah. Uh, man, so, you know, if, for me, you know, my failures, again, have just been not, you know, not connecting, not putting myself out there, not explaining how I feel and leaving it at that. And, and you know, uh, but we all go our own ways. And, and uh, plan. so I guess then the second part is, is this something that you feel you need to work on? Or is it something you are working on? Or I'm is this something you're already, like, good, all right. As, oh, Jesus, strobe, strobe, strobe. Look away, yeah. epileptics. Look away. I, I play music with, 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 my, with people that have been in my life for over a decade that love me for who I am, and I'm a fucking, I'm a, I'm a person, man. I have all kinds of downsides, you know, and... You're beautiful, uh, human. And, and, and it goes right, thank you, so are you. And it goes right back to them, too, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I love them for, for who they are, whatever, and we get to share this thing, and and as a musician, even beyond that, and, and a person, as a thinker, as a, you know, whatever, I get to share this with you, and I get to, sh you know, spend time doing what I love to do. You know, I got out of the job at Guitar Center because I didn't like fixing fucking people's toy guitars and having to explain to somebody how to take care of their instrument over and over and over again, because the clientele that goes there are the type of people that are trying to spend as little as possible to get as much as possible. You which, are not you know, corporate, my man. You are not you know, a corporate dude. You care. It's compassion. I'm a musician. I care. I am here to support my fellow musicians, my <clears> fellow <throat> artists, and anybody, especially as a guitar technician, whatever, as a person that's learned guitar, that knows music, is to share that with people. You know, that's... I want to get you closer to your dreams. Like, that's... Because, I'm, because I've gotten close to my dreams... And it's done wonders for me. Otherwise, yeah. you know, I'd be a fucking monster of a human being. And I'm in the first yep. band ever that didn't just hire me because I'm Dennis the fucking psychopath or, you know, I, mean, I guess people thought I was a good singer. I never did until recently, but sure. I love these guys. We are forming a friendship and they're forming friendships. They hang out together and play games and, and are creating. And then I got Tricalo and another band yeah. and I just brought them as yeah. my band. That's why I've been in the same band for 12 years, even if we had ups and downs or whatever, man. You know, as cool. far as stuff that I'm doing right now musically, because that's kind of, <clears> you know, we're going that direction, I'm not going to say. I I do have stuff in the works. Uh, and, uh, you know, with a few different bands, three, two, I'm in one. three bands. We should probably wrap yes, this up, my man, because yeah. we'll talk for fucking ever, which I, when I get my, my uh, rock cast, 2.0 interview. I would love to have you on it. I've had Sean Dillard, a couple people. Um, Dennis, man. yeah, definitely. On Mercy, I knew this was going to be awesome. I I knew you was going to be intelligent. I've seen you a long time. I hate saying it, I watched you grow up, but kind of did because I'm an old. You did and, watch uh, you grow up, yeah. yeah. And it's been cool. And like I said, when I I say you've got that Cobain esque, even listening to you talk more the whole time, I'm sitting here going, "He's so fucking cool. He doesn't even know it." Like those, I just like to take people. shit apart, and it makes me an asshole. You know, I I want to take shit apart. That's 
That's that's my mind. That's how I work. I've been lied to a lot, and it's done nothing but confuse and hurt me. So I try to, I try my best not to lie. I mean, I mean, I'm sure I do sometimes. But yeah, man. Yeah, I was yeah, a thief till I got and, robbed. <laughs> I was a hypochondriac <laughs> till I got sick, and I am an asshole till I die. I don't care. All right. Man. <laughs> any shout outs? Anything you want to? Uh, you know, any. Well, I guess not. We'll just have to wait. Maybe we'll have another one on the long form by then. We'll be over. Let me, and... let me do a shout out just, of course, to my own band, She. Uh, SheAK.Bandcamp.com. That'll the be music right there. For free. If you want to download it for free, if you don't, you can pay for it. I don't really care. We appreciate uh, the listens and uh, the attention and th- that you put into it. I'll buy it. Uh, I still want to give a shout out to my friend's band, Heal. A band up here in Alaska. Uh, they also have a band camp. I don't know it right now, but they're kind of in the vein of music that we're in, which is, you know, hardcore grind kind of extreme yeah. music. Uh, is that spelled you know, H E E L? And uh, I mean, there's so many shout outs I want to do. Obviously, you know, to all the people out there who know me and who have been supportive and allowed me to be who I am and do what I do. Thank you. And to you, Dennis, for being a friend of mine for 15 years. I love you, and I and, you too, and I love the things you hate about yourself, which is why I'm always <laughs> hearts on Facebook, because, you know, you and I are, are similar people. We're good at talking. We're energetic people, and there's a lot more that goes on underneath the surface. And, um, you know, it's uh, you and you inspire me to be more honest and to be, you know, more present. So it's awesome. That's what it's all about. My friend. Uh, thank you, dude. Mercy Dean Cofield. I love saying your name. Junior. Does Alf have any wrap ups, anything he needs to say, uh, as part of this? Yes. Thank you. God, he's huge. Jesus Christ. He looked like he was a little doll. dude. <laughs> so uh, as everybody knows, Alf eats cats. So yes, keep sir. your cat away from my house. Keep your cat away from my house. All right, man. We're going to wrap it up right there. Mercy Dean Cofield Jr., thank you so much for being on a moment with Mercy Dean Cofield Jr. I'll be in touch, man. Fucking right. dope, dude. Thank you. Love you, guys. Take care, right. buddy. I'm going to hang up on you now. Don't take it all personally. Right. All right. Love you, brother. <laughs> Stay safe up there, all right? I'll see you well, soon. As soon as I can fly up there, I'm coming up for three weeks, man. Three, it's already been arranged. Two, cool, brother. Oh, make a date. I will. All right, later. All right, dude. All right, Fucking mercy, Dean Colfield Jr. Awesome. Man, that is one intelligent so awesome. dude. And, uh, of course, I'm going to have to do a long one with him. You guys are only gonna, are, are going to get to see a very small fraction of what was an amazing conversation. Which, again, always leads me to being like, man, I should put these out as another thing. Just because, man. I mean... Fucking intelligent people love love these people. The messages, everything that they they put out so far has been good. And uh, yeah, so he is the last one for episode five. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I I want to say thank you to each and every guest that that came on. And uh, stay tuned for episode six. I'm not gonna stop. <clears throat> you can't stop me. When I run out of you people I know, I'll I'll, I'll find strangers. I enjoy this. I, I hope you're getting some inspiration from it. And uh, Rot loves you all. If you want to be on one of these, get a hold of me uh, either through Facebook or get a hold of me through my email at djevil9 at gmail.com. And uh, please subscribe and hit that fucking uh, notification bell. And uh, I, I appreciate it. I love you all. Rot. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening. This, this is only Dice Production. production. The the you can do this on the phone. Stay sane. Listen to the night. Listen to the night.